Good morning, Lake Grove. I, I am Karen Pergodich. I'm your elder of worship and music, and I'm doing a little bit of double duty this morning as I'm singing in the choir and assisting in worship, but it's a privilege to be with you. And uh, I'm welcoming those of you who are online as well as those of you who are here in this space. It is good to be gathered to worship together. I have a few things to bring to your attention today uh, for the life of the church. First of all, please mark your calendars for next Sunday, May 7th. Immediately following the church, we will be having uh, our next congregational meeting. And uh, this will be held here uh, just after the 9.30 service as well as live streamed online. Uh, the purpose will be to elect our new officers uh, and then update the congregation on our transitional process. Uh, there's copies of our nominee bios out uh, in the gathering, able on the, uh, gathering area on the information table, and um, we hope that you can attend. But I do want you to note that uh, voting on the church business is limited to church members who are physically present at the meeting. So if you normally worship with us online and would like to participate in that vote, please plan to be here after the service for the meeting. Also, next Sunday following our congregational meeting, we hope that you'll make plans to stay for uh, the Salam Shalom mission report at 11.15 to 12.15, but that will be in the fellowship hall. Uh, the team is excited to share their images and their impressions of their recent trip to Jordan and Israel. So those of you who were with us last weekend experienced a lot of information and positive energy connected to a remote village in Zambia. In fact, many of you accepted the call, the challenge to send your own picture to Zambia to be chosen as sponsors by a Zambian child. That was our chosen launch event. Then there was a choosing party, uh, an event this week in Muchila, Zambia, and this past Wednesday. So right now we want to share this touching video that illustrates what we may experience later this morning. You allowed love and light to invade the darkness and heaven came to earth. Sponsorship is such a beautiful program, but it has always been in the hands of the sponsor. The decision and the choice has always been in the sponsor choosing the child and said, no, we're going to put the choice into the hands of a child. This is what the gospel looks like. You put the motion of choice into the hands of a child. You lived out the power of the gospel of God as you put the empowerment and the choice into the hands of a child. I can never forget those beautiful eyes going over right and left, looking for people they wanted as their friend. Chosen is truly amazing ministry. Coming not as the one who's going to save them, but as the one who's going to learn from them and to serve them. And my prayer is that your heart is stirred by God today to step into a relationship with a child, and that relationship changes everything. Try that again, ooh, now I'm really loud. So last week was our launch and this week is the reveal. So if you agreed to be a sponsor last week, as you leave today, there will be an envelope uh, hanging with your name on it in the gathering area. And in it, you will find at least a couple of things, a picture of the child who chose you and a letter from them. 
And for those of you who are not here personally, uh, we haven't forgotten you. This morning, you should have received an email with a digital reveal of the child holding your picture. So finally, I'm guessing that some of you weren't with us last week or you weren't ready to make a decision. It may have all felt a bit too fast, maybe even intimidating to try to do on your phone, but maybe now you're thinking you'd like to join up with those 100 others. Is it still possible? I'm glad you asked. <clears throat> It is indeed still possible if you connect with World Vision again by 6 p.m. today. Just like last week, the process won't go quite as fast, but in about two weeks, you will receive a reveal email, and then in about a month, you'll receive a picture packet with a picture of your child holding your picture. Uh, there's a photo booth out in the gathering area, or you can send a selfie or your favorite photo from home. Uh, if you'd like help getting signed up for this, you don't have to use your phone. A volunteer can help you after church in the gathering area. If you'd like to do this with your phone, those of you who are online can see the number and instructions on your screen. Um, but if you're here in the sanctuary, you can get out your phones. No one will judge you. And you can send a text message to this number now or write it down with that pencil in front of you. You ready? You will text, the message will be LGPC to, here's the number, 56170. And then you'll follow the prompts to get started. And again, if it feels too intimidating to do that right now, just ask a volunteer in the gathering area and they'll be happy to help. So if you'd like to send that text now, just uh, text the address is 56170 and your message is just LGPC. So you can even send the text now and then respond to the prompts later. Uh, the link will be open till 6 p.m. so you can get the number uh, from a volunteer after the service and then have time to discuss it as a household and make your decision later today. So these sponsorships really make a huge difference, not only in the lives of the children there in Mochila, Zambia, but really for the whole community. And in fact, our Water Africa team will visit Mochila this August, so we'll learn more about this place where people are praying for us right now. Thank you. So with that, will you please stand and join me in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. Prayer is our lifeline to God. And also at night. Paul said to pray about everything. May our hour of worship be an hour of prayer with the risen Christ.
Our dear God in heaven, you are so good to us. We are grateful for the opportunity to approach you in prayer. We praise you because you know our needs even before we recognize them ourselves. And you lavish us with manna all around, everything we need to meet those needs and even more, exceeding abundantly beyond all we could ask or imagine. Lord, you delight in us, your people, and you welcome us with open arms to feast with you at your own table as your treasured friends. Lord, what a gift it is to gather and worship you together this morning. Teach us to pray, to worship, and to love each other, even as we grow in our love for you, dear God. In the gracious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, by the power of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Please pray with me. Merciful God, we join together on this Lord's Day with believers all around the world, from every tribe, tongue, and nation, to come before you and confess our need for you, both corporately and individually. Lord, we know that we often fail to love each other as you call us to clinging to our own cultures, our own opinions, 
and our own interests and perspectives, even when doing so damages our relationship with others. In our world, in our nation, our communities, our families, and even in this room, Lord, there are neighbors whom we have not loved as ourselves. Help us to have the courage and the humility to heal the bonds we have broken and to live in true community, that the world might come to see and know you in our love for each other. Forgive us and teach us to live in relationship with your children. Amen. So as the choir just sang in the language of the Zulu people of Southern Africa, we give praise to God because he has taken away our sins. Psalm 103 tells us that as far as, as the east is from the west, as if we could even measure that, so far has he removed our transgressions from us, as a parent has compassion on their children. So the Lord has compassion for us. So now as God's beloved children, know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Let's sing together in response to God's grace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. You're invited now to share that peace with one another.
Please be seated. God, you are the one who knows us, sees us, hears us. We offer the prayers of our heart today, mindful of a world that aches for you. We pray for those dealing with the loss of loved ones to disease, dementia, and death. Comfort and strengthen them as they provide care and bear the weight of grief. For those struggling from mental illness and the stigma that makes them believe that they are alone, grant them the courage to be vulnerable as you bring people around them in love and grace. We pray for those who are facing Ill testing, diagnosis, and treatment for injury, illness, and disease. Provide wisdom and compassion for medical staff and healing to those who are suffering. We lift up the ministry of the Lake Oswego Transitional Shelter, that our support would embody the love of Christ and that the clients would be strengthened as they transition into their new lives. We pray for refugees and those ravaged by war, particularly the Syrians in Mafraq, Jordan, who shared both their hospitality and their pain with our Salam Shalom team. Lord, give them hope and help them know that they are not forgotten. We ask for your blessing on the Jericho Project in Senegal, that you would prepare the hearts of those who hear the good news to hear your voice and respond to the message of salvation. And Lord, we rejoice in the provision of so many sponsors for the children of Buchila, Zambia. Bless them and their community through the ministry of World Vision and help each sponsor experience the humble joy of being chosen and loved by these children. Lord, knit together our community and theirs across the globe and use each of us to bless the other. Lord, we rejoice with the Heisler family at the birth of Sophia May last weekend. Bless them in these early days together with joy and rest. Equip Matt and Grace as they raise Sophia and big sister Amelia to know and love you and help us to surround them and all the young families of this church with both spiritual and practical support. We offer ourselves to you, Lord, and whatever is in our heart and in our mind, we lift to you in this silence. Thank you that you are the God who hears us, who loves us, and who responds to us with compassion, justice, and grace. Let's now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You remember that prayer when you're listening to the scripture today and see if it's the same as in Luke. Good morning. Good to be with you, and I'm delighted to share the pulpit today with our guest from Zambia, Ms. Faustina Samboko. She's from the capital city of Lusaka. That's where she was born, but she has served in more recent years in remote places with World Vision, the last five years in the place that our church was close, has been closely identified with since 2002, Sinazongwe, a remote and I believe neglected area. Um, we're so grateful that you traveled all this way to be with us. It's been a wonderful week of sponsorship, Walk for Water. You've been with various groups. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much. And um, we're going to hear from Faustina in a couple of minutes. But right now, could you just join me in welcoming her to our <laughs> chancel? So we are continuing in the Gospel of Luke, as I mentioned. We've been exploring it off and on since last September, except during Advent and Lent. 
And we took a little break last week when our guest from World Vision, Kaylee, spoke from Matthew 25. But today we're back in Luke. And even though Kaylee spoke from Matthew 25 last week, she talked about the upside down kingdom. And we are in a sermon series right now called The Kingdom Come Near. So God has orchestrated a kind of connection there, and that's wonderful. I love that idea of the upside down kingdom, and I identify with, with what she said when she said, we're the ones who are upside down. Even though in the scripture it says they're turning the world upside down, those followers of Christ, really, it's our reality that's upside down. We're a wreck. <laughs> Our reality is out of whack. We need to get more in tune with God, and God needs to turn us right side up. And that's what's, what the Bible's all about. That's what Jesus came to do. And we pray that as God reconciles the world to himself, little by little, uh, our world will be turned right side up. Certainly our individual lives can do that, but don't you think we need a lot more help in the whole world? Oh, yes. May it be so, Lord. Come, intervene. Come, Lord Jesus. And of course, we, one way that we can become clear on what that upside down, that right side up kingdom is all about is by being in regular contact with God, right? And what are the ways we do that? Well, we, we read the book. We connect with each other. We serve as God leads and most immediately, most regularly, hopefully most easily, we communicate with God in words and thoughts and feelings, and that's a concept that we call, thank you, prayer, 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 that's what it is. So today we're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 11, this foundational teaching from Jesus. I'm going to break it down into three parts for you, and then Faustina and I will discuss it. And we will have the benefit of her perspectives as someone from a different continent, a different culture. Uh, but before I invite her up to read the scripture, let's just ask God's illuminating presence on what we're doing here. So, our holy God, we are so grateful for your presence. And we ask that you would indeed be in the reading of your word. May the words of our Lord come alive for us today that you would be in the words of Faustina and myself, that today they might be your word to this congregation, that individuals might hear something and be moved, and indeed that you would continue transforming the world one life at a time, and those, one, those individual lives might be ours. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. There you go. He was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked. I and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives, 
And everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I break these 10 verses down into, yes, three simple mandates. Pray like this. Pray with persistence. Pray with confidence. How does that work? Um, At the beginning of the passage, Jesus says, pray like this. He gives us that model prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. It's in slightly different formats in the various Gospels, and that's why the way we pray it is a little different than the way Luke renders it, because we have a a composite version. Uh, But the model in all of them includes honoring God. It includes asking God to bring the kingdom, make it more of a reality in our world. It includes trusting God for daily things, like our daily bread, the daily necessities we have. It also includes asking God to forgive us and to help us forgive others. Pray like this is the first piece of this passage. Second piece, starting at verse 5, persist in prayer. That's how I read this little parable that Jesus shares um, where he seems to be saying, don't give up if God seems to say no at first. It's almost as if God seems to want to test us to see if we're serious. Uh, See if you're serious by continuing to pray before God will get out of bed and give you three loaves of bread. So Jesus encourages us to persevere. Pray like this, persist in prayer, and finally, pray with confidence. Jesus says, ask, seek, knock, and you will find the answer. Uh, that you will receive, you will find, uh, you'll find and the door will be opened for you. I'm guessing that not any of us has found that to be true in our lives every time we ask, every time we seek, every time we knock on a door. The door is not always opened, is it? It doesn't say that, though, does it? It says those who do these things will find answers, will Uh, receive, will have their door open. So if we don't ask, we probably won't receive. If we don't seek, we're not going to find it. And most likely, if we don't knock on the door, nobody's going to open it. So pray like this, persist in prayer, and pray with confidence. It goes on in the passage that we didn't read to say, God wants to bless us. So God wants us to ask so that God can bless us. That's all in this little section on prayer. Now, Faustina, uh, that first portion is about the Lord's Prayer. I'm curious about how the Lord's Prayer is perceived in Zambia. How do you use it? Do you use it in worship? Do you use it elsewhere? Talk to us a little bit about what this means in your culture. Thank you very much. Um, Back at home in Zambia, we, we are Christian just like you are. And, and, and in our Christian journey, prayer can be challenging sometimes. And um, the Lord's Prayer in the Bible that we read out today uh, validates what we can ask of the Lord and how we can present ourselves to Him. But not only that, we've been taught how to pray. But back at home in Zambia, I see different communities just like ourselves that may not say the Lord's Prayer every day. So at home, I see that the Lord's Prayer is professed mostly in institutions such as schools, uh, when we are opening a public gathering, and and many other spaces. Within the congregations um, in Sinazonga, for example, we have churches that profess the Lord's Prayer the way we do in this church. But we also have some congregations that are not quite deliberate about it. They will read it out in the Bible as a portion of scripture, but we may not profess it as a day-to-day aspect of prayer. So that is about home, and we, we do see that it, it, it has portions of its scripture that are not readily utilized because we don't relate or interact with them in our day-to-day uh, conversations. Thank you so much. And I, what I, part of what I heard you saying was um, it's not a part of liturgy in all churches. 
But on the other hand, Zambia, as a constitutionally Christian nation, does still allow for things like the Lord's Prayer to be used as an invocation at public gatherings and in schools and so forth. Like many of us remember in years gone by before the, the separation of church and state has been hammered so much in recent de decades. Is that, is that yeah. what I'm understanding? You're I know part. that those of us who've traveled to Zambia have been struck by how they use prayer in just about every gathering we, oh. we come to, whether it's secular or sacred. Thank you so much. Now, that was part one. What about part two, the persisting in prayer? What's your experience of that? And can you share anything from what you've experienced in others as well? Okay. So just to build up to, to what you highlighted, that sometimes as Christians, we, we will pray, but then our prayer can only go for so long. And when we don't see the results that we want to see, in the time that we want to see those results, we tend to lean back or give up. So it's the same in the communities at home. And depending on the things that we would want God to come through for us on, we will tend to either persist or stand back. So in many communities at home, I witness certain um, sections of communities where prayer and congregating the way we do is a vital piece to their daily existence. But then, for example, in instances where there's a sickness in a home, a prolonged illness of some sort, or problems that have been um, living with them for quite a period of time, they, they, we, we tend to see patterns where prayer does not become something that we depend on. And I see, in terms of sickness, I have witnessed a, a colleague that was telling me to say, um, w you can bring the sick to the pulpit to be prayed for by a pastor or, or a faith leader. But then the moment the sermon is done, and because the Lord has not come through, you can go and seek other gods, such as taking that person to a witch doctor. So you see a struggle between culture and, and being Christian. And the middle point is very difficult because when God does not come through, I have a backup of a God that I believe in, of something that I can summon and I think will come through for me. So I see that struggle. But this morning, um, it can be a different sort of God, lesser God that we may attend to back here in, in the United States and at Lake Grove. But we are being challenged this morning to say we are supposed to be persistent in prayer and our faith in God is supposed to be manifest even when God does not answer us in the way we require him to and in the timing that we have given ourselves. Mm, thank you so much. So I, I'm understanding that there are traditional values in Zambia that precede the coming of Christianity and they still conflict cultural values that are not in, in alignment with our Christian faith. That's interesting. I also heard you very graciously talk about back here at Lake Grove, and she didn't say it exactly this way, but this is what I understood. You may not have witch doctors. You may not believe in witch doctors, but you also have backup plans that you turn to instead of your faith in God. Am I interpreting you clearly correctly. correctly? Thank you for the challenge. <laughs> yes. That's a challenge. Yes, yeah. that's true. What are our false gods, mm -hmm. our idols, and mm -hmm. so forth? Mm -hmm. Okay. What was the third part again? Uh, confidence in prayer. Mm. Ask, seek, mm. knock. Mm. I turn it over to you. What, uh, share some Zambian insights about the, how we can be confident in our praying. Yes. Um, thank you very much. So, uh, again, when you look at the having confidence in prayer, I think for me it, it resonates very closely with persistence. So you will present yourself more confidently before God because you have a build-up relationship with Him and you communicate with Him fervently through prayer. But then when you show up only when it matters, only when it bothers you, you find that during those moments when you, want God, when, when, when you want God to come through for you, you're not as confident because 
You've been hiding. You've been away, and you've not been communicating with God. And at home, I also see a different perspective where when we see communities that are in grave need of basic human services such as water, they have to walk the long day just to access clean, safe water. We have mothers that are giving birth from home because the hospitals are far away and there are no skilled birth attendants. And we have child protection violations where a father abuses sexually their own child for a prolonged time and there are no mechanisms for protection or uplifting these systems. Confidence in prayer tends to go down because you don't know when God will come through. But then we are being encouraged this morning and through the work that World Vision has been doing in partnership with Leg Grove Church that there is hope and that we are being called and being challenged that we need to be confident and present ourselves as such before the Lord. And actually, the portion of scripture from Luke today dares us and the Lord is daring us unto himself when he say, ask, seek, and knock. And then we will find all these things being presented unto us because we believe and we remain to be believers. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's those are great insights. And again, I just have to notice that if you don't ask, you probably won't receive an answer. You might, but you got to ask. You have not because you ask not, it oh. says in James, right? Uh, well, this is very uh, encouraging and informative for me. And as we round out our time talking about prayer, I'd, I'd like to invite you to share with us three prayer requests on three different levels. How can we pray for the country of Zambia? How can we pray for uh, World Vision's work in specific areas? And finally, how can we pray for you personally? Okay, thank you so much. So first of all, I think, I, I, I feel that the, 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 the topic on prayer comes at the right time when we're trying to refine how else do we communicate with God? How else do we nurture and build our relationship with God? So I, I ask the congregation of Legroof Presbyterian Church to pray for my country, Zambia, as we continue to aspire for improved good governance uh, from our president. But also I want, to, I, I want us to pray for the leadership of, of World Vision as they continue to advance um, the kingdom of God through the works, the beautiful works that we do by saving the most vulnerable. So I pray that the leaders may be given clarity, may be given wisdom, and that they may continue to make the right decisions that represent the goodness and glory of God. And then secondly, I, I want us to pray for Sinazongwe area program, where I am leading currently. We'll be transitioning or phasing out in September this year and this has been a community that Leg Grove Presbyterian Church has been a part of for over two decades. We've built relationships, we've moved the community from a place of pain, anxiety and worry to a place of hope, and we want that they may continue on that upward journey and then continue to put Christ as the centerpiece in this uh, development and their well-being. Thirdly, I will be closing the program with my team and I, we, I am requesting that during the time of transition, I, I would want God to send me in my next mission with clarity and acuteness of purpose that I may bring glory to his kingdom in a way that uplifts the lives of the people that I serve. Thank you. Okay, so some of you wrote that down. We're praying for the nation of Zambia. World Vision's work in Zambia, especially in Sinazongwe. And we're praying for discernment and um, strength and clarity for Faustina's next call. Because when her boss said, well, let's think about what you're to do next, she said, I don't want to think about that. I have to stay focused on the current task. When we're done, then I can think about the next thing. Thank you for that focus. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we will pray for those things. We also have a great opportunity today because 
A number of you are new sponsors. You're going to find your sponsor child at the reveal in a few moments. This would be a great time just to start a new habit of praying for that child, that child's family, that child's community in Muchilla. There's something strong, divine, synergistic about people praying for each other around the world. The prayers come in uh, opposite directions, and God hears those prayers and blesses us because of our mutual prayers for one another. I would speculate that the pastors that I am friends with in Sinazongwe have prayed more faithfully for me than I for them, and maybe when I'm in God's presence, I'm going to know the blessings I've received because they've been praying for me, or the harm that I have been spared because people have been praying for me on a regular basis. Prayer works, and when it's going in both directions, there's a special power that is unleashed, a special channel of love. Now, we're about done. I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you now to pray for us. Pray that we would all become better prayer warriors, if you would, in any way you'd like. Shall we pray? In the blessed name of God, our Father, Lord, God Almighty, we humbly come before you this morning, and we're thankful, Lord, oh God, that in your word you've reminded us this morning on how we ought to pray, and that you've dared us, Lord, in your portion of scripture, that we ask, we seek, and we knock, and that you will come through. We present to you, God Almighty, the congregants at Leg of Presbyterian Church, that mighty God, you may touch each and every person in this room, and that, Lord, O oh God, you may continue to minister unto them. I'm thankful, Lord, O oh God, for the journey and the partnership that we've enjoyed with this church, with your Christians, and that, mighty God, you've allowed them to build relationships that reflect the goodness of your kingdom. Even as they continue, O oh Lord, on their upward journey, we pray that your spirit, O oh Lord, will abound, that your spirit, O oh Lord, O oh God, will sustain them on this journey of saving the most vulnerable in different countries and through different missions, O oh God. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that, Lord, O oh God, you may continue to strengthen their prayer life, their communication with you, and that, Lord, O oh God, your relationship with them will build upwards and that they may remain persistent in prayer and that, Lord, O oh God, they may continue to pray confidently because out of those prayers, we've seen manifestations that have allowed us back in Sinazongwe to enjoy the goodness and the glory of your kingdom. We thank you and we praise you for each and every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May it be so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are grateful for the opportunity to give. We give now and ask you to receive our gifts and multiply their impact for your purposes in the world, for we give in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Bye. 
Faustina, we really didn't give you a chance to just bring a word from Sinazongwe or share from your heart. Why don't you do that right now if you'd like? Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you so much to every Christian that is physically here and those that are praying with us virtually and that they didn't make it in person and belong to Leg Grove Presbyterian Church. We're so thankful. I am so thankful for, first of all, the warm welcome that I received from all of you. And it was my first time, of course, to have flown and to have come out of Africa. But then I did find a family here, and I'm so excited that I met you and that I had a productive week with you advancing the kingdom of God. I just want to remind each and every one of you on how special you are to our hearts back in Sinazongwe, and I've got great stories to tell back at home because not only have you been a part of our journey, a part of our transformation, I want to affirm to you that you've helped to change lives even in the way that you communicate with God and you stand as one as a congregation but also in the way that you've come through for my program area and the communities where we work as World Vision. From where I sit uh, throughout the time, I can confirm with you that the love that you've shown us over time only speaks of what the kingdom of God looks like. And we are greatly humbled that out of the so many needy places in the world, you chose us, you chose Sinazongwe, and that you've been so faithful as a church that you came and walked with us when it was the darkest. And even when we are going towards the end of the program, you just didn't say bye. You had to walk with us throughout the process, and we leave Sinazongwe a much better place than we found it, and all because of how we partnered with you, how we walked with you, and may God bless you richly. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. And these words of blessing from Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication make your requests known to God. Persevere in that. Do it confidently. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And all God's people can say together, Amen. Amen.